If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Breaking news. In this breaking episode of Mind Pump, for the first 25 minutes or so, me, Adam, and Justin have some fun conversation. We talk about candy. Ooh, it's, yeah, that old uh, crack uh, cocaine for kids. Gives you diabetes. Yeah. Uh, then we talked about unpredictable television sh- television shows and how much we like them. We talk about Organifi's new product, their red juice, uh, which, by the way, if you are interested in getting Organifi products, go to OrganifiShop.com and enter the code MINDPUMP for a discount. Then we talk about Beats. Beats, man. Not the uh, not the musical beats. Beat, the beat, but, but, but beat. I got to throw it in there again. Yeah, you got to do that. But it's, the, it's the jam. The food beats and uh, how one time I ate a whole bunch of them and uh, I had red <laughs> pee. Dude, you're peeing blood. I had red pee. No, it wasn't good. It wasn't. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, what's the best way to increase hunger so that I can eat more food? This is obviously somebody who's trying to gain more muscle. I hope it's more muscle. I don't know anybody wants to gain more body fat. (laughs) Then the next question is, we have an individual who's doing lots of core work, but they're having problems with their lower back, pain with their lower back. What are they doing wrong? Hmm. We answer it in this episode. Little deactivator technique. That's right. Then we talk about warming up. What should it look like? How important is warming up? And is there more to warming warming up than just preventing injury? Yes, there is. A lot more, it turns out. Finally, somebody asked us the question, hypothetically speaking, if being healthy meant being out of shape, would we ever sacrifice aesthetics Hell no. <laughs> for health? We know Adam wouldn't. And he gave away the answer, but we or talk about he? more on this episode. Also, uh, this month, we've got some incredible promotions going on. If you enroll in any of our MAPS programs or any of our bundles, like our MAPS Prime Bundle. Let's talk about that one specifically. We did talk about that a bit in this episode. Yeah, so it's pr- applications. MAPS Prime and Prime Pro, two of our most popular programs. My, MAPS Prime teaches you how to prime your body properly before your workout. This is extremely important. Uh, for many of us, it adds about 10% more effectiveness to our workouts in terms of weight lifted, performance, muscle building, fat loss. Throw away your pre-workouts. Simply by priming properly. Then Prime Pro is correctional. So if you have pain in your neck, your shoulders, dysfunction, your wrists, your hands, your feet, your ankles, your lower back, Prime Pro helps you assess yourself. There's a self-assessment tool, easy or for me to say. drink uh, Alka-Seltzer. Apparently. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and you can create, you can, uh, going through the program, you can correct imbalances that are causing those problems. Uh, it's really a first of its kind in the industry. You can get them both in a bundle, discounted. And if you enroll in any bundle this month, you get access to our forum for free. That's an $87 value for free this month only. Next month, the price of the forum will go up as well. Mm. So this is the month to do it, and we're closing out on it pretty soon. Go to mindpumpmedia.com and enroll now. Best commercial jingle of all time. You think so? You know which one that is? Which one? Take a sniff. Pull, pull it out. out. The taste, taste of juicy gonna food move is going to drop it in your mouth. That's, that's how it's, <laughs> that's how it's it. The taste is going to move you when, when you, you pop, pop it, it in, in your, your mouth. mouth. Juicy fruit is going to move you. Is that real? That was the... You don't remember the juicy fruit? I don't remember juicy fruit. Here's the lyrics. Here's the lyrics. You can look this up. Take a sniff. Take a sniff. Pull it Pull it out. out. Already, the taste is going to move you when you pop it in your mouth. Yeah, it sounds a lot like gay porn. Like what? Uh, right? I guess Think I'm going to do it. an Instagram post of that today. I'm just going to put just the lines up there and just see, the lines? see what happens. See Take what, a sniff. Yeah, pull it out, and then I'll hashtag. Uh, what is it? It's uh, juicy fruit. Juicy fruit. Juicy fruit. That's yeah, going to move you. One of the best uh, tasting but f- annoying gums of all time. Because yeah. it tastes super good. For 15 minutes. Approximately 15 minutes. That would be a blessing. 
There's no way it lasts longer than 25 seconds. There's it's no way. It's not like juju bees, though. Remember those? That used to like get stuck in your teeth. Just my enamel is just immediately. You eat, that's you, eat three, them. you eat three of them for uh, the whole movie. The worst can <laughs> like candy ever made. Yeah, that's, the, uh, yeah, that's, the poor, that's the poor kids' candy. You know what I'm saying? Because like, back when we were poor, my oh, mom damn. we have family of five. She's like, okay, listen, we get one box of juju yeah. fruits, but it's gonna last all of you this entire yeah. movie. You'll eat like one five. You. And it just like well, destroys yeah. your Here, teeth. Here's for the first half of the movie. Here's your one. Here's your one. But mom, it's not healthy. Listen, it's juju. Juice. Juice. It's fruit. Yeah, yeah. It's made of fruit, it's son. It's fruit stuff. Look at it. Look at it. It's little, peach, little fr- peaches and grapes. Look at it, son. It's fruit flavored. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Uh, you know what else? You know what was a good candy? I'll tell you what was a good candy. Let's see if you guys, let's see how good you are. Adam should know this. You're the candy wizard, oh, or at right. least you should be. I don't know. I don't, I'm the wizard, but I don't yeah, know if I'm the candy the, wizard. Well, I'm more like the vagina wizard. Whoa. You should. <laughs> the, <laughs> so, yeah. the wizard of the wizard of vag. The wizard of <laughs> Uh <laughs> What does that mean, by the way? I don't even know. I, I mean, I, what is you it? You create magical <laughs> yeah. experiences. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, Sprinkles you just could, fly. You could tell a woman's future by her vagina. Uh, uh, mm. that's, crystal, that's what I used to say. Yeah. According you got to your crystal balls, you just like summon. You know, yeah, I don't know. According to your vagina, you got a nice future. So, uh, no. Here's some candy that'll take you back a little bit. Do you guys remember melon heads? Yeah, of course. Oh, so good. Yeah, melon they and were, lemon heads. They were lemon heads were good. They weren't that good. But they weren't as good as melon heads. No. Oh, see, I like no. lemon heads better than melon Did heads. Did you really? You yeah. can still buy lemon heads everywhere. Melon heads I've never I haven't seen since. I was a big nerd fan. Like, were you, that's what yeah. we're friends. Yeah, see? So you used to buy nerds from the uh Yeah, ice cream we had man? we had a like kind of a ritual as kids. We would go swimming like uh, at the at the community pool that was like in our area. And then on the way back there's this place called the fountain and we would like you know, spend whatever like changes in our pocket on like shitty candy like that. And you'd get nerds. I would get nerds, yeah. I would get nerds or like red ropes, something like that. Oh yeah. Uh, what yeah. about the what about the okay, you guys obviously pixie sticks, which is just uh is a very lazy way to make Fun candy. dip was the boss. Pixie sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Fun dip was good, but pixie sticks were just it was just just, hey, let's like let's, let's just put dump sugar sh- in our mouth, like yeah. artificial, just, just powder shit. It's like the co- the candy manufacturers, are like, what do we do with all this leftover like oh God, all sugar this dust? Like, yeah. like every all the dust in but the do, factory. Do you remember the in these things? Do you remember the big plastic tube ones that were like yes. thick? Yeah, remember get them at Great America. Yeah. You get them at Great America or for like dip and for like two dollars, yeah. and they're like six foot long. Oh <laughs> they're just God. like a tube of sugar. How much sugar do you think is in that? I never even thought about that. Let's think about that right now. I ate those as a kid way. all the time when I was a whole one to your face. Yeah, was it dextrose or was it sugar? It was. Uh, well, it was well, sugar because I mean, dextrose yeah. by itself doesn't taste that good. Okay, so it was uh, it was table sugar, but they made flavor it and have coloring in it. But that's all it was. It was a bunch of yeah. fucking sugar in this big tube. It had to have. It's got to be a hundred, a hundred grams of sugar. At had least. to be, had to been one of the most brilliant ideas as a company. Like <laughs> so lazy. Like how easy is this? Like let's just get a fucking we giant loved it straw. As kids. We're just ah! let's get a giant straw for these fucking fanatics, right? And Literally think about that. It resembles. Yeah, I was gonna say it resembles like straw for a cocaine for for kids. You know, what I saying? feel like it's candy like, makers they learn stuff from like hundred percent, totally hundred percent. Here's your evidence. Like how to hustle it? Here's I think, your evidence I think right most, here. I think, I think that's what most drug dealers they do when they go clean. Like you know, I've already made my wow. I've already made my wow. hundred million on the street. Now I'm gonna parlay that into the oh into going what if legit. That was true, yeah. Like all the drug dealers. <laughs> now I'm gonna sling. They go legit and they go into the candy business. <laughs> right now I'm gonna sling some drugs to kids. The uh, it's true because one of the more popular candies when we were kids was uh, the the gum cigarettes, the fake cigarettes. Oh yeah. This was a real candy, ladies and gentlemen. For those who don't gum know, chew this was a pack. Of pretend cigarettes for kids, you buy it the gro- you buy it from the ice oh, cream I love man, those. Yeah. and you pull it out, and it had powdered sugar in it, so you could blow in it, and it would make pretend smoke. Yeah, and then you unwrap so it and cool. you eat the gum, yeah. and all the kids would buy it. Mm-hmm. I can't believe they got away with that shit for yeah. a long time. It, for, totally, it was an old candy. Who was behind that? Do you remember what company made that candy? Marlboro. Mm-hmm. That would be no, smart. I'm just kidding. It would be smart. <laughs> Starts him off early. <laughs> would be really smart. They gave it away. Oh, I'm sure. Like, oh, give it. To, we'll give it to him for free now because we're gonna get him. We're gonna get him for life on yeah, the cigarettes yeah, in a couple more years. <laughs> sprinkle a tiny bit of, uh, of tobacco uh, in there. Yeah, nicotine. nicotine in there. <laughs> so I got one. I remember the transition because at some point there was a transition with the ice cream man candies, where they started throwing in the Mexican candies, mm. which are disgusting. By the way, they're not candy. Necos? Don't fucking trick everybody. Into thinking that it's candy because it's not. It's fucking salt. It's mm. salt and spices. 
You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I remember the green oh. little packets and stuff. What the fuck is that? Those. Yeah. I remember when they the, introduced the them. Le- and I'm like, the lemon, the lime, lime and lime and salt. Yeah, they call Lucas or some weird shit. <laughs> I remember going to the, to the to the ice cream man and I was like, oh, what's that? That looks interesting. I'll try that. Spent my hard earned fifty cents on that. <laughs> Just yeah. pull angry. it out. Angry as a kid. I'm like, oh, look, it looks like crystallized sugar, and so it's like so- lick it, and I'm like. What the fuck is this? It's salt. And lime. <laughs> lime it's and salt. salt is what it was. What are they doing over there? <laughs> That's that so giving funny. That reminds salt. me. You said 50 cents. I literally had a job where I would walk this wiener schnitzel dog for 50 cent piece. And then I like upgraded later on to like a silver dollar. To a full size dog? Yeah. And then you got a dollar? Yeah, yeah. Like a bigger <laughs> dog. I got like a, a, this, this old lady. And I did it for her like kind of as a favor, but it was like, that's how she paid me. I just remember that. It was like I saved all of them. Wow. So, so I, I told you guys, I used to, when I was a kid, we had a, 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 a Dachshund. Dachshun. Dachshun. Yeah. yeah. So we had a mini one, a little tiny guy, aggressive as fuck. And did I ever tell you guys when he killed a Rottweiler? What? Yeah. So you did not have a mini dots and kill a Rottweiler. Kill a Rottweiler. No. Dude, you're tr- yes, he did. Storytelling. 100% you know? killed a Rottweiler right in front of me. Like a mangled, like old, decrepit. No, no, no. It was a 120 pound Rottweiler. No way. Listen to my story. Oh, God, let's hear it. Listen to my story. This is, this is a tall 120 tale. pound Rottweiler. No. You chased him in front of a car and a car. No. 120 pound Rottweiler. All right, we're listening. And, they, and my Dotson get into this fucking just crazy scuffle, and the Rottweiler. Choked on the Dutch and died. <laughs> <laughs> you fucker. That's so, so bad. I, so now I can go around telling everybody yeah, my dog, my ch- Dutch and killed her. That never happened. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's, no, I like that. It's good. I, 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 we keep pushing PETA. Yeah. I, I know. Respond. What are you doing right now? We already had that episode. Did we release that episode yet? Do we? Uh, I don't know if we did because I, I haven't gotten any messages yet. The chicken so. story? Yeah. I don't think it's been released yet. No, no. it hasn't. It, well, we will. Lord Doug says no. <laughs> Lord, Lord Doug. How many nicknames? Sith. Doug's had quite a few nicknames now. This is a new one. It, I'm actually. Excited it was about Doug this. the Jug for a second. Now Doug it's the Jug. <laughs> well, it's, that's his. That's his. When we were on the road, that's his nickname on the road. Doug the yeah, Jug. Road name. Well, I see Taylor upgraded your your little table your table uh, ornament yeah. there. I have. I had you. You got the spread eagle on there now. Yeah, I'm. I'm the all Darth out. Vader. And then uh, Darth Vader's helmet. Vader is, moved to, to Doug's, you know, computer. Because he's Lord Center. Lord Doug. I yeah. I feel like you got the cool stuff, man. You got the Vader. You got the eagle. You're talking about you got the skeleton guy right behind. Sal you. and I have fucking four sigmatic no, no, no. shit. I have nothing actually. Oh, yeah. I have <laughs> nothing I mean, behind cool. me. I don't need what it is. Is I don't need those kinds of things. You don't need I am possessions <laughs> of the yeah, world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm beyond uh, that. Start, I'm, so I'm beyond possessions. Start floating. Yeah. I don't watch Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. I'm so good. Which, by yeah. the way, was fucking epic last week. Oh, yeah. dude, what a crazy episode, <laughs> right? Oh, my God. I haven't crazy. actually watched that one yet, so don't oh. say anything. Yeah. That was cool when the fucking dude and the dragon and that one girl with the white hair <laughs> yeah. and the fucking, you know, the white walkers and accurate, all that shit. Accurate. Crazy stuff. <sighs> Crazy you stuff. You have been watching, haven't you? No, Secretly. I can't is. not know about it. Everybody talks about it. Oh, I see. It I just see. pushes me further. Is it, is it everywhere? It's everywhere right now, huh? Yeah, everywhere I look. Uh, because it's epic. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, I right. was, uh, so the, the book right now, Irresistible, that I'm finishing up, uh, is right now getting into like TV series that were like crazy and epic and they talked about The Sopranos. Did you watch The Sopranos? I watched uh, maybe like four episodes oh, of it. God, you didn't watch that either. Yeah. Justin, have you watched that one yet? The Sopranos? Yeah. Like the entire series? Yeah. No, I haven't seen the whole so, thing, most of it. The So what's so crazy about it and what they were talking about, for years, people still talk about the ending of The Sopranos. Oh, uh, and, and whether or not... What's the I watched like actually? the second half and actually watched the ending. Yeah, so, so yeah. it's like uh, it, it's one of the most epic endings yeah, ever. And by epic, crazy. I mean it fucking pissed a lot of people off. And, mm-hmm. you know, some people thought it was perfect. Some people thought it was horrible. But, Very divisive. And, and the, and the uh, creator would refuse to uh, speak any further on it. it. was like, that the show is the show. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. you know, like, what, how, it, you, it's That's your interpretation. how it played out. Yeah, it's how it played out. It's your interpretation, however you want, that he potentially could have got killed or maybe he went on and lived and had a happily normal life, whatever. But, man, it creates. So I'll never forget the day I was watching. So I, was, I watched that when it was aired. So it wasn't like a recording. I watched it live when it was happening. I remember, like, Sitting there, mm-hmm. excited. It's the season finale, and then the screen goes blank. And I remember, like, ah, like yelling in the house, like yeah. checking all the wires. I thought because yeah. they, <laughs> yeah. they, they, perp- they sent, they give you like a fifteen second blacked out screen pause. And you're a, everybody at that moment had been thinking the same thing too that their TV had gone yeah, out. Something's wrong. Yeah, and it just 
it goes blank. God, goes, that's so great. Oh, yeah. it, it, and I, I appreciate stuff like Pissing that. Pissing off people, like so many people yeah, at yeah. once is such a great well, I love, thing to do. I love it's unpredictable. Challenging. I love unpredictable yeah. movies and shows. Like I like the weird stuff. Yeah, me too. Katrina likes the totally. feel good, know what's coming shit. I hate that. Like, because well, what's lasted with you the longest? It's the ones that, like, at the end or, or like throughout the series, they fucking challenge you like hard. Like you, that's what Game of Thrones. Like you identify or like you you figure you think you figured it out, right? You, like this person and they is kill him, be, and then he's dead. Yeah, that's You're why like, it's great. What the fuck? That's why it's great. It keeps throwing you off. And so they just like they Wah. talk about that in Sopranos that uh, over. So Tony Soprano had over a hundred, I think he said a hundred or ninety something. Over a hundred or ninety something people connected to him died mm-hmm. throughout the whole series. That's a lot of people That's- over <laughs> over an eight season. I think it was eight seasons, yeah. eight seasons or twelve seasons. Eight sort seasons. Of- eight seasons. It's a slaughter. Uh, right. Think of how many people had to die. Like that's a lot of characters. I do like I do like that kind of writing where you're you're watching something and you think someone's a good person mm-hmm. and then they turn out to be an asshole or the other way around. Yeah. Right. You know, you think they're bad or they're both, which is that's like, that's, that's a that's a that's a, a a skill right there where you can make someone breaking both. bad, right? Like that, yeah. that was like like groundbreaking because like, you know, that that whole character, how he evolved and then like completely turned into this other person and you're just like whoa it was that's hard a- you know hard for my wife even to take she wouldn't watch the rest of the series because she had him as like no i felt bad for him right because he's got cancer and all this stuff and then you know he turned into this evil Gangster. mastermind dude it, it's no i love stuff that it and it challenges you right because all of a sudden you some people identify with it and you like it you know i'm like i liked him on i like the bad side of him yeah you know what i'm saying it's, like yeah it's interesting yeah when he becomes kind of a fucking thug and a badass and just like Fuck yeah, dude! Get him. And you're like, then you gotta ask yourself, like, well, yeah, wait throw him in acid. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Burn it. oh my god, who am I? <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what happened. People you guys go, this evil laugh yeah. while you're talking about. <laughs> 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 you're <laughs> horrible like, people. Oh shit! Who am I working with? Oh, yeah. What do you got in your cup there, Adam? Uh, dude, let me tell you. First of all, okay, I can hear it. Shaking. I know. Uh, this is my first time trying the red juice, uh, like just in the morning time. Oh, the Organifi? Yeah, no. So we got it in the other day, right? I just had it for uh, pre-workout. So um, it was like four o'clock yesterday, I think. And I can't have any sort of like <clears throat> pre-workout drink or caffeine drink past four or else. Good Trouble l- sleeping. Yeah, good luck trying to sleep. Hmm. But uh, I thought, you know what? You were talking about, you know, some of the benefits that you felt from the cordyceps, and I know that the red juice has that in there. Mm-hmm. Has that, and I think I think it has ash. No, the green juice has the ashwagandha. It has mm-hmm. the cordyceps, and then it has it's got rhodiola, and, Siberian yeah, ginseng, yeah. and and you said that you rishi, rishi. you yeah, you said you noticed uh, that when you worked out that you felt sustained stamina and energy. So I thought, well, let's let's see if I can get anything out of this right now. And to be honest with you. I went in very skeptical because it does. I'm, I drink a lot of caffeine, coffee, and I and I even use pre workouts every now and then. So, you know, I figured if I'm gonna if I'm gonna take something that doesn't have a lot of stimulants in it, I'm probably gonna be like, rant, rant. I'm not mm-hmm. gonna feel much of it. But I what I fucking loved was I had an incredible workout. Now, mind you, this is the first time, so I'm oh, still skeptical. Mm-hmm. But I am sharing with you what my first experience with it was. I, I had a great stamina in my work. Didn't feel crazy, extra strong. Didn't sweat like crazy, like how you get from niacin and shit inside these pre-workouts. But I had a very solid workout. Normally where I'd feel like I'm getting, you know, pooped out towards 45 minutes and I'm almost done with my workout. Felt strong all the way through. Looked up at the clock, realized I'd already been in there for over an hour. I thought, oh shit, I could go. I need to get out of here. I've already done plenty of work. And when I left the gym, I felt tons of energy and then I still didn't have a hard time going to sleep. So that was my big takeaway. So today, I'm drinking it right now because I wanted to see, because we have this podcast we're doing right now, and then we have Kelly Stark coming mm-hmm. in next. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to see if uh, if it gave me like a nice little boost throughout the day and see how I felt. I like it so far, man. Well, so what's in it that may be doing that is, so it's got rhodiola. Uh, rhodiola is, uh, it's been used in Chinese medicine for a while. It's got very strong evidence to show that it uh, fights fatigue. Um, it's good for endurance and stamina. So when pe- when they test it on animals and athletes, it's actually been tested on athletes, that when they're pushing themselves hard, they have more stamina. Mm. It's not really a stimulant. Now, here's the thing about rhodiola. I've taken rhodiola in the past at high doses, and I don't like the way it makes me feel. It reminds me of red Panax ginseng 
which will do the same thing to me. If I take a high dose of it, I get really hot and then I feel feverish almost. And uh, my uncle, who's a, he does Chinese uh, medicine, so he's a certified, whatever you call Chinese herbalist. He said it's because if you have too much yang energy, uh, hot herbs like panas ginseng will promote too much of that and you'll feel overheated and feel kind of kind of depressed, which is what happens to me. But uh, so too much rhodiola does that. This doesn't have tons and tons of rhodiola, but what it does have is it's got reishi in it, which should balance that out. And it also has the cordyceps and then it has Siberian ginseng. Siberian ginseng is interesting now. If you have in Chinese medicine, if they if you present where you uh, have too much yang, like I said, they'll recommend Siberian ginseng and not red panax ginseng because Siberian ginseng has a balancing effect. So it's pretty interesting. I had some. Well, uh, tell me if I'm doing this wrong then, because I actually really enjoy mixing it with the the green juice, which has. Fine. The, is it fine? Yeah, I'm not absolutely like fine. canceling anything out. No, 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 absolutely fine. Because uh, I like the flavor of the green juice, mm-hmm. which blows my mind. The fact that I actually yeah. add green juice to something for flavor. That's the best part about that. I feel like the, the green juice is that it's the first time I've ever had some of this stuff and it doesn't taste like shit. And has this great minty flavor, and it goes good with the red juice. So the combination of the two of them together, which feel, makes me feel great. So boom, I get a good good serving of my my daily greens. And if I get more today, that's great. But regardless, starting it off, and it's with got that. beetroot powder in there, and a few other things that have been shown to be healthy and beneficial. A lot of athletes now are eating beets before uh, their training. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. I have. Seen, uh, yeah. It's it's becoming a thing. Um, there, there's compounds and beets that do in, improve. Uh, blood flow quite effectively, in fact, more so than um, arginine or citrulline. Oh wow! Yeah, so uh, so a lot of endurance athletes will drink uh, beetroot powder, just mm. powdered beetroot, or they'll eat the the beets themselves, which I think is probably the best thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and they'll get stamina and endurance. I've never tasted. Excuse me, I've never tested. So great when you get it beets. from like a natural, you know, earth grown. Uh, you know, vegetable or, or, you know, fruit versus like taking something else that's like manufactured. That's ideal, man. It's yeah. always ideal to get food. The thing I like about um, uh, Organifi is it's all organic. Yeah, you, and it's you all, read the label and it's like, these are all real plants. Yeah, and it's all like sourced from plants. Mm-hmm. So it's a good, uh, it's a good second place. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah, a lot of people are, yeah. are consuming beets and I'm starting to see now bodybuilders are starting to do it because of the whole pump. You know, I wouldn't be surprised huh. if beets <clears throat> weren't something that they consumed before going on stage for that vascularity, for that particular effect. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. Have you, you heard, heard anything about beets? No, I have heard beets, I, but I not to the not in bodybuilding community as much as I have with athletes taking it mm-hmm. for sports. So I'll, I'll play with. I mean, I'm literally going to be interesting to get really, really lean because um, right now I, I seem to be getting leaner. I'm not really focusing on it, but it's happening. It'll be interesting to see if I get. Because I know when I get really lean, I can tell. I'll eat something and I'll know. Pff, I'll get vascular, right? Depending on you, you've you've noticed that, but yeah, on yourself yeah, before. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, as I and that's what I'm. I'm the same thing, right? I'm really excited. I'm getting ready. Well, I go to Alaska next week, so that'll be kind of a wash. I look at, and then when I get back, I got three weeks till we hit Olympia, and then I'll really crank it up, and that to me will be the where I'll really be able to tell. Because right now, I mean. When I'm when I'm inconsistent with my nutrition, where I'm not really tracking like super, you don't know what's doing what. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what's doing what, but I will be dialed really hard coming in. And I and I I'm not completely all over the board right now, but I'm not as consistent as when I'm measuring, weighing, tracking, which mm-hmm. I will be those final three weeks heading into Olympia. Right now, I'm just kind of intuitively eating, but a little bit more calculated about it than what I was previously when I was focused on mobility because I'm increasing volume in my training just kind of maintaining my weight right now before we ramp it up dude i, I got a i got a story for you i can't believe I've, i never told you guys this long time ago i was over a cousin's house and we're having dinner and they're serving you know typical italian food right pasta and then the meat and the salad whatever. and then they bring out a big plate of beets which i've never eaten a lot of mm. um uh, and, and when i was a kid i didn't like them so this was like as an adult, right? And the yeah. way she, the way they were prepared, they were fucking delicious. How did they do it? Yeah, how do you so, prepare beets different? So they were uh, first of all, the, she had they were cold, um, and I'm trying to remember what she served them with. 
There was some other fruit in there or something else that made it. They were just really, really good. And, and I actually enjoy the taste of beets now. I've had chocolate beet cake, which is actually not bad. Really? Yeah. Chocolate beets. <laughs> it's probably just like consumed by chocolate. But, so, yeah. so I eat a shit ton of them. Like I'm mm. just eating a whole bunch of beets. Didn't think twice about it. This is back when I managed uh, the 24-hour uh, on uh, I think Santa Teresa. No, for no, a no, week. no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. You're gonna love this. <laughs> so I wake up in the morning after you know dinner, or whatever. I wake up in the morning to take a piss. Red. Ooh. Yeah. Ah. I'm like that's I'm, like your worst nightmare. I'm like I'm pissing ah. blood. What the fuck? Yeah, that'll scare you. Call in sick. <laughs> go to the doctor. Doctor's like, what did you eat the night before? Did you have beets? Mm. Yes, I ate a whole shit ton of beets. <laughs> Did you know that it can pee make you red. fucking pee red? Ugh, it can make you pee and poop. Doug's oh. nodding his head. Have you ever had that, that ever happened to you, Doug? Yeah. yeah. You poop black, right? No, red. Red. Like yeah, a- dude. Like, like, like act the color red. It's fucking frightening. Because I thought, like, okay, so if you're shitting blood, I'm getting graphic here, but uh, like that typically, like, it's dark. It's really a dark color. Oh yeah, tarry. Your poop will yeah, look yeah, really yeah. So like, it's not like super black and tarry. Hmm. That means it's higher up in the in the tract. If it's like bright red, that means that's somewhere near the oh, hole. Okay. You've been bleeding. <laughs> oh, is that true? Yeah. Oh, so I've if never, it's black. Never, yeah, no, that makes sense. If it's tarry black, then that means that you're bleeding way up high in your system. Hmm. If it's like bright red, like blood, then again, that means it's closer to the to the hole. I feel everybody just puckered up. Right yeah. Now. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So uh, if you eat a lot of beets, uh, be warned. <laughs> you may be. You know, I keep, you keep saying beats, and I have that like. Uh, you guys watch Saved by the Bell back yes. in the day. Beep, 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 beep. Go Bayside. Oh, yeah, what a great! Yeah, you remember that? What a great show! God, you remember Terrible. the most random I shit. I, I was like, gonna hold on. See, to See, Justin's like, got a lot of the same things that I have. Yeah. This is just directed. Towards <laughs> it's just other the things. other stuff. It's just a bunch of bullshit, like noise Un- floating. Around. Unfor- unfortunately for Justin and I, it's random commercials and baseball <laughs> cards. <laughs> you got you lucked out it with. Doesn't the fucking, help. Yeah, yeah, it helps you out with the scientific studies over here. I wish I had the same. Same thing, same. Uh, but Damn I, it! I, I that's why baseball stats and weird, weird shit like at that. At some so point, it's, it's gonna so come random. in handy, dude. It's at so random, dude. I don't know. Yeah. I actually, it's to me too. It's a if you don't use it, you lose it. Because because I don't, I I went through this phase like in I think it was let's see here it was twenty three ish somewhere around there. At some point when I started managing, uh, I started working a lot of weekends. And I gave up my Sunday football, and that that was the beginning of me really falling off of being like a sports fanatic. Like I was a major sport, like tracked everything and stats and who was coming up from college and who was picking who up. Like mm-hmm. I was just everything. Like my my two best friends are still those guys. Yeah. I once I started to work the weekends like that, I had this, and it was about I would say two or three years that that happened, and I. I fell off enough that I was not current and my buddies just gobbled me up, dude. They just punked me, made fun of me, gave me a hard time because I just would, didn't know my stats, didn't know my players like I what I used to and then I could I never and then I never cared enough to continue to keep up. Do you it ever never, like like kind of fake it? Like, you know, cuz like you're in a situation <laughs> with like older guys that like they'll see you wearing a specific like team hat or like apparel or something <laughs> and they're just like they're, like throwing out stats at you and certain players and you're like Holy shit! I don't know any of these people. Well, uh, I mean, I, luckily for me, like, I well, I, I and I'll admit that if I know that because there, there's nothing more embarrassing. Yeah. Like, because I have buddies that like I really, just saw. I'm, I haven't been keeping track. Be, that's, yeah, like, my that's, answer. Yeah, yeah, I'll be like, no, I have no idea who who got picked up this year or whatever. Because if not, that you look really silly when you're when you're talking about a team that you claim is your team and you're like, oh, yeah. oh, he doesn't even play for them anymore. <laughs> like, oh, whoops. Oh, yeah. We. Yeah, so I love it when people wear shirts of shit and they don't know about. It, it happens all the time, right? Oh, if yeah. I wear any sports of team, of course, you know. <laughs> I wore it because I thought it looked good. Now I feel like you should. Like That would be awesome. My, be ironic. My favorite. I don't, do you guys know who Che Guevara is? Che, know, che. Che. Oh, yeah. Che okay. Guevara. Yeah. I love it when people uh, wear his They don't know the history. And at, have at no yeah. fucking idea of the guy. Yeah. The guy completely hated, hated, opposed all forms of capitalism. And you're buying a t-shirt with his face on it. What, like when, bought at a, you know. when did we see that? We just saw someone wearing that. You made yeah, that it was fuck, what's Beyonce's husband? What's his name? Uh, uh, Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Jay-Z uh, was wearing a fucking chess shirt. Hmm. Che was a fucking racist, dude. A horrible racist. Oh, so he had that shirt. I was like, do you not know what he said about 
black people. Did you see the yeah. new? Did you see the new Defiant ones? Did you watch that show? I watched one episode. God, I keep forgetting. This. I know. So I, good. I, really? I watched the last chance so you good. though. The new season. Oh. I am so into it. I Holy told shit. I told you. I am like it, like it is hooked. I watched like three in a row. I'm like ah. Tell me it, the, the production is ridiculous, right? It's on another level, dude. It's like watching a movie. Yeah. I'm so impressed with the with the uh, videography of that. I mean, it's crazy how how much they've stepped their game up just from the last season. I mean, last season was great too but yeah, I mean, well, the first one was good but this it, one's like uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, way better but i want to watch defiant ones defiant yeah. ones is, is very very good if uh it's entertaining for sure but because of the business that we're trying to build mm-hmm. it's very inspiring to watch especially because it was my childhood you know a lot of these artists that they talk about at least, well, at least the first episode i watched which was uh, with dr dre mm-hmm. but to see what they had to go through the trials and tribulations and how they they so strongly believed in what they were doing, they were compelled to do what they were doing. So does it's, it kind of take awesome. from? Because I loved like Straight Outta Compton, one of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. But uh, does it take like sort of from then forward? Like his it talks about the, it the talks about thing? the beginning and his relationship with that one uh, producer, that Italian guy, the shaved head, smaller dude. I can't remember his name. Um, who and they kind of talks about both their stories about how they got into music. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's great. It's it's just. I love listening to stories like that. They're very inspiring. It's great to hear about people who just overcame odds, had an incredible talent, but the drive and the work that went behind it. Because mm-hmm. it's almost never... Is it Amazon or is it... Uh, HBO. HBO yeah. Oh, it's HBO. HBO. It's an HBO series. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. so I have that. And did they release like... Um, There's like four episodes that's that you it. just watch. Okay, so I was wondering if they did it like that. Because, you know, some... Some of the shows now, uh, you know, instead of trickling it out, they, the whole season they release it at once, yeah. right? So when you when you get the like Netflix does that, right? Netflix yeah. when a season. I don't comes know. Out. I have the HBO on demand, so I can go and watch whatever series I want, you know, whichever episode. So I think that might be playing. I think HBO still drips theirs. I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't know. It's really good. I'm sure somebody will let me know. All right, on br- the form. Bring on the Defiant Bird. Defiant. <laughs> being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. First question is from Mark Wolves. What's the best way to increase hunger and be able to eat more? Oh, I like this question. Yeah, no, I did it for you, buddy. Did you? I picked that one just for you. <laughs> you know why? Because I feel like we talk so much about losing weight and leaning out and all these strategies. That's most of fitness, right? It's usually about around that. Well, it is. And so that's why we talk about it. But I still feel like there's a, a there's got to be a big portion of people that can relate to what I went through as a young man growing up and trying to build muscle. And this was a major challenge for me. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. I could not keep up. Uh, you know, and they always used to tell me, oh, don't worry, that'll change. And they were right, you know, fucking 30 years old is totally opposite. Now it's just like, fuck, just think about getting fat and get fat. Mm. So, but <laughs> as, a, as a young adult, yes. uh, growing up and lifting, uh, I had a really hard time consuming enough calories. And it was a combination of things, right? Uh, aside from being already mm. uh, a fast metabolism or faster metabolism, um, because I think I just have that genetically already, but I'm also a six foot three guy, and I'm uh, I'm very active. I played a lot of sports. You growing. also sprouted all at once. I did, didn't you? I did. That's got to take a lot of energy from your bo- from from your body to do that. Right, right. You know, I wonder how many calories because you went from. You told me you you were short up until I was. I played point guard my uh, freshman and sophomore year in high school, and it was my junior year I sprouted up over six foot. But before that, I was like five three, so I was like five three, five four in high school. Fuck off! No Swear way. Wait a minute. How many inches did you gain in one year? Um, I went all the way to six foot, I believe. So I went from five like I was five three and a half, five four my sophomore year. And then my junior year, I sprouted up to six. Dude. Holy shit! Over a su- over a summer. <laughs> well, no yeah. wonder you couldn't gain weight. How painful your, was that? Your like, body was all going. It was all going to your bones. So hands. what? It wasn't painful, but what I did realize, and I remember, I totally remember this feeling of. So I always played soccer too, right? So I played soccer for over seven years as a kid growing up. 
I played all I played and then I played basketball. So those were like my two main like organized sports. I played all sports, but those were my two organized ones. And I was actually the better soccer player until I shot up. And then I got so lanky that I was not uh, my proprioception was off. Like my body awareness was so different. Wow, you really, do you remember that? Oh, it I felt awkward. Very much so. I, I, there was a moment. Uh, I'll never forget playing soccer practice in high school, and um, they they kicked the ball towards me, and I actually just grabbed it. I just caught it, and it was a reaction to 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 protect myself from getting hit right in the face with it. And anybody who's playing soccer for everybody knows better to ever use your hands. Yeah. And so that would, and for someone who's been playing as long as I had, that's not even a natural reaction. But because my my body did not have the responsiveness that it had, mm. that I was so used to for so many years, that that became like my default was to protect my my face. And I remember that like, what the fuck? I remember even questioning myself, like, what did you just do right there? <laughs> and and then I remember feeling myself cutting left and right on the soccer field. And ju- I used to be one of the fastest guys on the field. And I went from being one of the fastest guys on the field, if not the fastest, to one of the slowest. Mm. And I just did not have the footwork that I had before, the body awareness. Like it, it was a very awkward time for me. Now, that same time, I was playing basketball. And luckily, I was a point guard in basketball, which required you to have good handles and ability to dribble well. So here I'm sprouting up. I had good footwork as a point guard. So even though I started to get a little awkward and tall and lanky, it actually uh, worked to my benefit being a tall basketball player because most big men, if anyone's familiar with the sport, uh, power forwards and and centers are not the best with ball handling and footwork because they're big and lanky. But because I had trained myself so well as a point guard to handle the ball and cut and move as I lanked out, um, I lost some of that ability, but I still was so much far further ahead than the kids that were always tall and lanky. Mm-hmm. So it worked well for basketball and I, and I would, I did better that way, but yeah, no, that's, I'm sure that had something to do with it, but I was playing, I played basketball every single day, literally of my life for probably 10, 15 years. And on top of that, on the weekends, I was snowboarding and wakeboarding and, you know, I was always into, you know, paintballing and I was doing extreme, real high activity type stuff. And I was lifting weights, trying to build muscle. And I was totally going every day I could in the gym. Like it was, you know, I thought the more I lifted these weights, the bigger I would get. And I just had a really hard time growing. And it wasn't until later that I realized that it was my inability to eat enough. Then I tried it to out eat my activity. And I was, that was a constant losing battle before I finally realized that I've just got to chill out. I've got to lay off the activity I'm way too, if I cared about building, right. And this is, I think every young man that has, that struggles with this Mm -hmm. goes through this, this, this moment where you decide what is more important to you. Do you want to get bigger and build more muscle and be more like a bodybuilder? Or do you really enjoy playing all these sports? And it's probably not the ideal situation for you to put on 20 pounds of muscle mm. what which one's more important to you now there's now and i think it's important to note that there's there are kids that have the ability to kind of do both we've all those are mesomorph type body types even though we don't believe in semantotypes really those those guys and girls that can be muscular and play sports have a specific body type i did not i had an mm. i was a lanky tall swimmer body looking guy who was playing sports and also wanted to look like a bodybuilder and my body just said fuck you no way you, you're not going to do that and yes I could but then it would require me to make some sacrifices and for me it was cutting back on a lot of my sports in order for me to and I, I tell you what I got all kinds of tips for somebody uh, in this in this area like for example um, something I, I learned early on was if I had a really high fat type of meal in the morning, which is how I eat now, ironically. If I were to eat like a breakfast today, bacon and, and whole eggs and you know a high fat type of breakfast, that was bad for someone trying to build because it would satiate me. And then I wouldn't want to eat for four or five, six hours later. And it, it, for me to get enough calories and food in, I need to be eating every couple hours to, to, to get to that caloric intake that I needed. So eating these high fat meals. So I had to stay lower or leaner as far and lower fat earlier on in the day so I could consume meal after meal after meal. And then I would pile calories on at the end of the night. So 
that was a major strategy for me. And I know some people are not going to like to hear this, but something that also worked very well for me was this is also when I introduced cannabis into uh, my life. I used uh, smoking weed to push me over Get the, the munchies. The, yeah, no, I, I, actually, I used it for that as a strategy. I would eat a, my big, huge dinner meal. So I, let's say I'd consume about 3,000 calories throughout the day, which is a pretty good amount of calories for the average person leading into the evening. And then dinner, I'd have like a thousand calorie dinner, pushes me at 4,000 calories. And then I would go smoke weed and then I'd turn around and eat another 500 to 1,000 calories uh, afterwards. And that was a big contributor to me putting on some mm. weight and size. So, not that I'm advocating you smoke weed, <laughs> just saying. So, <laughs> hey, yeah, it might be a kid we're talking to. <laughs> yeah. So, I know who Mark is. If he's a grown ass man. Before I, I give you some tips and tricks to help you eat more, we need to also be very clear on the signal of hunger. The signal of hunger is a very fine-tuned signal that we evolved to have, and it will propel you, if you're healthy, uh, to eat what you need to uh, based on what your body uh, thinks it needs, okay? So step number one is if you have malhunger or you have poor hunger where you don't have an appetite, uh, it's prob- you, you may have some issues going on with your health. Uh, activity tends to stimulate hunger. Building muscle for sure will stimulate hunger. In fact, if you train properly to where you send the right signal where your body wants to build muscle, you should notice an increase in appetite because your body's trying to fuel that uh, adaptation. I also don't like the concept of forcing uh, issues on the body. I know we all have goals. I get that. But sitting here stuffing my face with food, which I did. I did it for years. I was a skinny kid. I started lifting weights at 13 years old. So I know this very, very well. Is no better for you than uh, starving yourself in the, in the sense of how your relationship to food ends up uh, turning out and becoming. Um, I, uh, I didn't look at food in terms of health or not. I looked at it in terms of calories. And I needed calories. So that meant if I had to eat 1,000 calories, well, there's a pint of ice cream. That works out just fine. Or let me add a glass of whole milk to every meal. Or let me blend this food up because it's easier to drink it, no shit, than it is to eat it. I used to do that too. I'd blend up. Uh, it wasn't out of the ordinary for me to blend up chicken breast or tuna fish in a blender with water and fruit and just fucking plug my nose and pound it. This is why to this day people, my girlfriend laughs when uh, if I'm taking a tincture of like an herb medis- for medicinal purposes, like if I'm getting sick or whatever, and I'll just straight take the tincture in my mouth, no problem. And she's like, how can you do that? It's so disgusting. I'm like, you have no idea how, <laughs> how I trained my body as a kid yeah. to consume disgusting shit because I was always trying to gain weight. Mm-hmm. So number one, rule number one is get healthy, get good sleep, and send the right signal to your body. And your appetite should be healthy. Yeah. Okay, You should have a healthy appetite. Now, besides that, ways you can kind of make yourself eat more is uh, realize that uh, the body's signal of um, satiety can be fooled a little bit by messing with how palatable your food is. And what I mean by that is Mm. if I eat a big savory meal with lots of fat and salt, salt, sugar trick, there you go. I I may be, uh, I'll get satiated pretty quick where I'm like, oh, I can't eat another, you know, piece of steak. Like I'm just full. But if you introduce something sweet like some fruit, all of a sudden, I override that system and I'm able to eat more food. Uh, so that's something you can do. But you know, at the end of the day, let's consider this. Okay, here's this, here's the, Let's look at the science. Let's say you want to gain a pound of muscle a week, which by the way, if you're gaining a pound of muscle a week, you're on fucking fire. Like you are doing really, really well. Your it's, signal it's, is loud. You've got a good yeah. muscle building signal. You're crushing you're probably a beginner because you can't expect to gain a pound of muscle a week if you're advanced. It's very difficult to do. But let's say you are. There's about, I don't know, uh, 120 grams of protein within that pound of muscle. And you know if you count all the other energy and stuff like that, I don't know, how many, how many calories and grams you think will go into building that, that pound of muscle? 600 calories maybe. Divide that over the whole week. It's less than 100 calories a day. You don't need a shit ton of calories to gain lots of muscle. You just don't. In fact, I've trained young kids and I've had them do it the right way and they'll just gain lean mass versus the way I would do it where I would just stuff the fuck out of myself, make myself sick, gain weight on the scale, but that kind of was a little bit of fat and a little bit of muscle. Then when I try and get lean, 
I'd lose both as well. This is also why I'm, you know, I always tell people the the wearables, the trackers, and the and tracking your food because so you're aware of this. Like otherwise, because I remember being a kid and just stuffing and not having a clue. Am I? Is that enough? I know I worked yeah. out a lot today. Like I still to this day as a 35 year old man, I fluctuate uh, dramatically. The difference between a Sunday day of movement and activity for me is extremely different than a day like today where I was up at five o'clock in the morning. You're talking about a thousand calorie burn difference. That's a lot when you're a guy who's trying to build muscle and and be living in a caloric surplus. So becoming aware of your your activity and what your body's burning and what you're actually consuming so you don't make the mistake that Sal's talking about because you're, you're right. You don't need to be in this massive surplus people. There's this misconception of how, and I was, I know I was way off as a kid. I mean, I I was sick stuffing my stomach. I just think there's a lot of people who train poorly and then, and that's why they're, I'm not gaining muscle. Like their programming's off. So they stuff their face because they're like, Oh, it's food because we've been told that now for years through the bodybuilding community that, Oh, it's not your, you can't overtrain. You can only under eat or it's not your workout stuff, your face, you know, stuff your face and you'll gain muscle. That's not true. Good. The right signaling will put muscle on you. Look, I'll give you an example. Here's a great example. Take a fucking person, a guy or girl wants to build muscle and they're struggling. Like they're doing the workout, they're eating. They're like, oh, I can't gain a single pound of muscle. Don't have them increase their calories at all. Keep your food exactly the same. Give them anabolic steroids. What do you think will happen? They're going to gain a little bit of muscle because now they've got another signal telling their body to put on some muscle. Well, that's the same with your workouts too and your sleep and everything else. Like, you don't need to stuff your face. If you're in the if you're to the point again, this is all within the sphere of being healthy because if you have poor appetite because your sleep is off, you're high stress, you're depressed, there's something wrong with your hormones, your gut floor is off. That's totally different. But let's say you're healthy and you're eating and you're like, "Man, I can't I can't eat any more food, but I want to gain muscle. So do I need to like, should I choke this chicken breast down? Like, no, no, you shouldn't. Like, listen to your body. If you're not gaining muscle at that point, then examine the other things. Examine your routine. Look at your workout. People don't look at their workout enough. No, you know? that, that was a big game changer for me when I put that piece together too. Um, Cause I, I think there was levels of this for me as, as cause it, m- for most of my life, I struggled with putting weight and size on. So for, it took me a long time to, get to the size I am now or get to a point where I say like, oh yeah, it's a lot easier for me to put body fat on than it is to uh, to lean out. Uh, so I definitely think that there's there's levels to um, getting here. You know, I think that the programming is definitely a piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had, I realized that- The most one, overlooked piece, you know, yeah, you could argue for trying to gain muscle. I, I, I realized real quick that going from seven workouts down to like four workouts and making those four workouts more effective and doing better movements uh, and not training the other days uh, made a big impact. Mm-hmm. Like- you know, I was going in the gym every day and hammering high intensity workouts. I brought down my intensity level, uh, did better movements and exercises, and trained less, and actually saw a huge gain. I saw my body yeah, just was- actually, literally, like instituted rest periods, and, right? And, and you've like deliberately focused on what it means to strength train, which I feel like a lot of people decide to train hard, and then they get caught up into like interrupting their rest periods with adding more intensity by cutting their rest periods. Right. Right, That's like a common thing that people don't even realize they do that because they get antsy pantsy and and just like any athlete wants to like perform and to be, to, to sit there deliberately and like make your body, you know, go through that process of, you know, just deliberately telling it this one thing, like I, I need to get better at this one thing. And then also like adding in, power element to it like you know let's focus on power let's stimulate the cns in a different direction so it all contributes to uh more muscle build mm-hmm. building techniques that right. you need to apply i wouldn't i would actually take days off too so for me because the food thing was a piece that i needed to get better at and that i was missing there and i knew that <clears throat> I, I would uh, treat my workouts as a reward, a reward for my diet and nutrition being dialed in. So I would figure out what I need to eat calorie-wise, nutrition-wise, what I needed to grow and build. And I would say, okay, like I got to earn that good workout because if I go, I could really easily get caught up in that trap that you're talking about right now where I'm just training intense and hitting it hard because hoping that that's what's going to make me grow. 
when re- in reality, like let's say it's four o'clock, which was the normal time I was training back then, and it was time to hit the gym, and I'm like, oh shit, like I didn't eat, I didn't eat this morning. Yesterday was kind of a light day on calories. Like me going and just burning a bunch more mm-hmm. is probably not the most ideal thing for me to do if I want to build. You know what I should do? Go to the grocery store go make some meals, get myself prepared to have a more successful day tomorrow. And so I would make choices like that. And it was hard for me to do that because I was trained to go to the gym. I love to go to the gym. I love to work out. It always feels good. You get this massive pump and you break this sweat and the athlete in me wants to do those things. It took a lot of discipline for me to say, you haven't earned the gym. You need to get your diet dialed in better. You need to be nutritionally ready to build. You're not setting yourself up for success because you're living in this caloric deficit and then you're going to go burn a bunch more. Are you really helping yourself out? You're catabolic, you know? So I think that's uh, also something that I had to put a piece together. Before we go to the next question, I want to be clear. Eating, boosting your calories does cause a small anabolic building effect, but it's short. Mm-hmm. It is not long. So you can boost your calories and notice you're going to build more muscle just from the more calories. It's about two or three weeks before you need to switch out of that. Otherwise, it just goes straight to fat storage. So that's why we talk about the mini bulks. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. If you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Off. Go check it out. Next question is from Firewood53. Just started doing more core work. Lower back is now a problem. What am I doing wrong? This is common. You know, you know it's how many times people will tell me mm. I can't do this core exercise or this ab exercise because it hurts my lower back. You know, bad you know what's great about this question was, and I don't know how long this person's been with us, but the most controversial viral video or post that Sal's ever done is plank. addresses this exact reason why we encourage the the plank the way he did that post yep. and it's boy did it stir up so much shit in the fucking <laughs> You know, yeah. you know, uh, fitness professional community because everybody well, because the staples, the crown jewel of core exercise, right? That everybody knows to be a certain way, right? Yeah. And this just show, this this exact question is very common and very normal, and it's something that the three of us have dealt with a ton of fucking times, mm-hmm. and it's the reason why. You know, when Sal did that post, why he puts that emphasis on the people rotating their pelvis in is because we know that most people that get in that position that think they're working their core are really just stressing the fuck out of their low back and their shoulders. They they haven't set themselves up properly from the very beginning. Which is, I'm guessing, the direction you were just about to go, Sal, with this is that more than likely that's what's going on with these people doing these Yeah, so the front side of the core is part of the, is, you know, your abs, obliques, and all the internal muscles stabilize your trunk uh, just like your lower back does. Um, If one muscle isn't doing what it's supposed to, other muscles will uh, take over. Now, your core does a few functions, does quite a few functions. The main ones are it stabilizes, Mm -hmm. uh, it flexes you at the spine, both uh, to the the front, to the back, to the sides, and it it, it rotates, Mm -hmm. okay? Now, when you're feeling low back problems or low back pain, if unless you have a low back issue where you actually have an injury, many, many times it has to do with uh, the hip flexors and one hip flexor in particular, the psoas. The psoas muscle is a hip flexor that attaches at the lower uh, spine and it goes through the body kind of in front of the pelvis and attaches at the femur, the top of the leg. When that muscle is doing more than it should, it tends to get tight and inflamed and the pain you'll feel is at the attachment at the lower back. And you'll know this when you go do leg raises or sit-ups and you're like, man, I don't feel my abs working at all. I just feel like my lower back gets tight. Well, what's happening is your your lower back is tightening and arching. Your abs are stabilizing, but they're stabilizing in this kind of extended position. And you're flexing at the hips, which is the hip flexors, and you're feeling low back pain. So what you need to do is you need to learn 
had a flex at the spine. Which we did a video series on this. We did. Mm-hmm. We did that with uh, with Dick, right? We brought we brought Dick over That's and right. did uh, talked all about this exact point right We here. did that, and then we did a hip flexor deactivator, I think it's called, yeah. uh, video where I show people how to get their- If you are not subscribed to Mind Pump TV on YouTube, get over there. This is what, this is the whole this idea. where all our visuals are. Right. You know, we talk all day, but like to see it, it's a totally different experience. And- and a lot of people don't know how to use YouTube. I didn't know when we first started this. It wasn't until way later that I figured out how organized and nice it is. When you go to YouTube, you subscribe to Mind Pump TV. Then after that, you'll see up in the top of the, the channel, there's a there's a tab that says Playlist. You click on the playlist, and then Doug has organized them in topics like this. And I believe that one falls under core or corrective or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, you'll see you'll see the different playlists. Dude, th- this was a game changer for, you, for me a while ago. You yeah. know, I had... Um, I had, you know, I, w- I was able to get really lean and, and, you know, I could get pretty muscular and I'd really only have like a visible six pack when I get shredded and if I flex them, but I never had abs that were visible, relaxed. I was always envious of that. Like, fuck, look at that guy over there. He's totally relaxed. He's lean, but you could totally see a six pack. That didn't really happen to me unless I got super, super shredded. And I didn't realize it was because my abs weren't well developed. And part of the reason why they weren't well developed is I didn't understand their I didn't understand working them in a full range of motion, which is at the you know flexing and extending at the lumbar spine, not at the hips. Mm-hmm. Once I figured that out and I started to really learn how to flex and extend at the lumbar spine and then use resistance to build them, my abs really started they built out to the point where now I don't even have to be super lean and you can kind of see at least the top two rows of my abs kind of sticking out. And I really started developing kind of this nice, uh, strong, built core. But before that, I would experience low back pain too. I'd do, I would do leg raises or mm-hmm. Roman chair sit-ups and it'd feel like my back would tweak. And I just didn't realize that I was totally doing it wrong. So one exercise I can recommend is uh, a, a straight-up floor crunch. Put your This is the video that we have, which we'll, we'll put in the show notes. You lay on the floor, put your feet up on the bench, press into the bench with your heels so that your butt comes off the floor just a little bit, And what you're doing is you're activating the glutes and the hamstrings. While activating those muscles, do some slow crunches where you squeeze really hard. What's happening by activating the glutes and the hamstrings is you're, you're in a a way, taking the hip flexors out of the movement. Because you're flexing the opposing muscles, the hip flexors tend to relax and it's going to help you separate the, the abs from the hip flexors. What you have is a recruitment pattern problem. You could very well have strong core muscles, by the way. It's just that your hip flexors are doing more than they should or mm-hmm. firing uh, when, when they should They're your shouldn't. default right now. They're becoming your default, and it's causing uh, low back problems. So once you fix that issue right there, then you'll slowly be able to progress to the more intense, uh, heavy resistance ab exercises like leg raises and Roman chair sit-ups and all that other stuff. So... Uh, although I, I don't know what your form is, I don't know what your your problems are. I can say with pretty good certainty that the odds are you probably are in that category where you're just hip flexor dominant. Yeah, well, I mean he could totally benefit from the six pack. Uh, the uh, the no BS, yeah, right? like so, like it, it's all outlined in that in a program that uh, you know I kind of revisited myself and been going through that, and it's really helpful. It just goes through all these like nuanced techniques to you know help get more proper engagement with that and really focus and hone in on that proper signal so if this is already an issue you know that's something to consider talk about an underrated program by the way the no bs six pack i I literally put that together with part of this as one of the issues in there but it's just a workout that you can add to your workout uh, specifically for core to build the muscles of your core so they are more visible so you have more of those pronounced you know, abdominals and, and defined obliques and all that stuff. But really a lot of it has to do with form. And then the other part, which I address in the program, is how to use resistance for your core because they build like any other muscle. Next up is Kylie. What should a warm-up routine consist of? Mm-hmm. Priming. This has changed a lot for me. Big time. Over the years, Big man. Big time. I used to view warming up as uh, injury prevention. That was it. There was no other... Uh, purpose or goal for the warm up. It was all about, you know, getting blood flow, get blood flow, yeah. make my joints feel better. You know, when I was younger, uh, I almost never warmed up. Uh, God, when I was really young, I would just get into the bar. Then, as I got a little older, my warm up consisted of doing that exercise with lighter weight and moving mm-hmm. up in weight. That mm-hmm. was it. 
Then as I got a little older, it, it consisted of foam rolling and stretching because then that, that would help me with pain and stuff like that. And then more recently was a huge, for me, a huge, uh, just uh, mind-blowing uh, uh, paradigm shift with how I approached warming up. And that was that uh, I understood that warming up, sure, it should definitely help prevent injury, but that's the least it should it could do. That's like the minimum, like the bare minimum of what a warm up could do is help prevent injury. It's like a car, like the, the bare minimum a car is going to do is drive you from point A to point B, but it can do a whole lot more too, right? With your warm up, if you do it properly, your warm up should prime your body for your workout. And what it's doing is it is setting the stage for recruitment patterns that are favorable. It's setting the stage for your central nervous system to fire uh, effectively and efficiently so that when you go do your lifts, you're getting the most out of them. Because I'll use a barbell squat and a barbell deadlift as an example. Both exercises, extremely effective at building muscle and strength. Everybody knows that. Mm. Both of them have a potential that they can give you. Let's say that potential is a 10. Let's say that you do that exercise, you get 10 points from it, or that's the potential. If you do a priming session properly before you do those exercises, you're going to get a 10 out of that exercise. Yeah. If you go into it and you don't do a good priming, you might only get a 6 or 7. So you may not, you may not even reap the benefits of that exercise because you didn't prime properly. I have an analogy, and bear with me, Sal. This is a sports analogy. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, I, I look at it like so a golfer, right? So if if they're about to approach a game, they're about to get into um, you know, a tournament and they haven't walked the you know, the grass. They haven't gone through, they haven't like really visually like gone through the experience of wow, okay, the dog legs left here. Um, you know, like this is how this is my elevation. Uh, this is where the sand trap is over here. Like all these factors of, of just, you know, going through visually, you know, like walking through and teaching the body, uh, you know, the mechanics to recognize, you know, what are the correct pathways for me to get to this, you know, destination. Um, as, as I go through each hole, like it, 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 it differs. So if I can start kind of thinking of that in terms of my workout. So, I mean, this is definitely like, like almost overly planning, but uh, I mean, you could get really specific if you if you so desire. Like, you can teach your body things um, to really, you know, uh, set it and, and hardwire these these processes, so you get so much more effectiveness out of you know what you're trying to accomplish every single workout. Um, and and that might sound like daunting, but um, if if you can kind of pull back and just keep you know very um, very specific movements that you know will enhance. Uh, pushing, pulling, uh, overhead positions, things like that that you can reinforce. Think about how much better your your body's going to perform. Mm. Well, w- working out is uh, very much so a skill, and I don't think that we we treat it that way enough. I think that people look at exercise or working out as exercise is just this is how I lose body fat. This is how I build yeah, muscle. Burn calories, sweat. Right, burn calories, build muscle. And there's so much more to it. And every, every movement you perform in that gym is a skill. And some of them are a crazy skill. Squatting and deadlifting and overhead pressing is a major skill, like playing a sport skill. And other movements like a bicep curl or a tricep pushdown, still a skill, just doesn't take as much skill. And so when you go into a workout, your warm-up is, is preparing you for that skill that you are about to go perform. And like the analogy Sal gave of, you know, you may, if you don't, you may only get a six out of that skill, out of that exercise because you didn't prime your body properly. You may get a 10 if you do that. Some people are genetically gifted and get a nine right out the gate without even priming whatsoever. Mm. One thing is for certain that I know now being older is if you don't, over time, that will diminish. So maybe as a young athlete or a young kid, when you first performed some of these movements, you 
got right into it. You felt strong. You felt great. And you were, you're getting eights right out the gate out of the skill, meaning that you were getting de- decent returns from your squats, decent returns from your deadlifts. Mm-hmm. You probably weren't getting a 10 because you weren't priming properly and you still could get more of it. You just didn't know you could get a 10 because you felt like you were getting progress from that. As you age, that is going to diminish because throughout the day, you don't spend 24 hours squatting and deadlifting. You spend it sitting at desks, driving in a car, you know, sitting at a computer, sitting in front of a TV, playing video games, whatever it is that you do, you spend more time doing that than you do these movements. So what ends up happening is you start to create these patterns and different pathways, and then you go to go perform this skill that you didn't treat as a skill later on, and now your body starts talking to you, and you start feeling these aches, these pains, you start seeing diminishing returns, you're starting to go like, what the fuck? And then it seems around 30 or so, everybody wakes the fuck up and goes, oh shit, maybe I should be doing some sort of a warm up or getting myself ready. I think those that start to put these routines in place at a younger age are going to, uh, will surpass most the rest of us and uh, will avoid a lot of nagging pains and, and injuries and potential surgeries that a lot of people end up going through because they waited until their body yelled at them and said, what the fuck are you doing? You have no business mm-hmm. squatting or doing this movement until you actually properly warmed up. But it really depends on what you're about to do that day. And this is really what maps prime and prime pro uh were to address was okay you know here's your workout for the day these are the movements you're going to be performing these are the this is how you should prime your body to get ready for these these specific skills because each of them are different the way you prime your body before you go do bicep day and you go do a, if you're going to if you have a split that you do is totally different than how you prime your body and get ready for squat day. Mm-hmm. Uh, it re, they totally require different <laughs> different parts of your body to speak. And you got to understand that all lifting weights, if you don't tell the body how you want it to communicate, it's going to take the easiest path for sure. It's going to go. It'll cheat. It'll compensate. It'll do whatever it takes to move the weight because that's all you're telling it with the brain. If you say lift this weight up, pick it up over my head, your body will do whatever it needs to do to do that. But if you're going to do this properly, get the most bang for your buck and not hurt yourself, you want to do it in, in a in a certain manner that doesn't risk injury and gets you the most bang for your buck, which requires you to understand how to prime for those And it's movements. also individual. It's very right, individual. Right. Like if one person could prime completely different than the next person for the same workout and the same exercises – based on their natural or their current recruitment patterns, based on their posture or previous injury or whatever, uh, I'll give you an easy, here's a very easy example. If if I have a lot of issues with my thoracic spine, which is kind of my mid-back where my shoulder blades are, right? If I have issues where that's excessively rounded and my shoulder blades like to be rounded forward, and I know I'm going to go do some heavy squats, and I know to have a good squat I should have my shoulder blades pinched down and back, and I should have my chest nice and open and wide. Then a, a prime for me may be mm-hmm. to work on that movement, You know, getting my shoulder blades pinned back, opening my chest, maybe stretching my chest out, stretching my shoulders out, You know, activating my mid-back with some you know, specific movements before I do the squat. Because then when I get into the squat, boom. I'm in position. Yeah, you respond right away. I'm, what you don't want to do is get into the squat and try and figure it out when you got a heavy yeah. weight on your back. Right. Because now, uh, like Adam was saying, it's going to go to that default, to that, that old pattern, and then you're strengthening that pattern. What you train is what you strengthen. Mm-hmm. So if you don't prime properly, you're going to you're gonna train these patterns that may not be, be or are likely not ideal which was which is not a good path which I mean, goes back to why i mean it's been a while since i've harped on running but this is why i'm not a big runner and why i'm not a big fan of clients doing that unless you are specifically training for a marathon or a sport because if you have these bad patterns and then you go run like nothing is cementing that more than that i mean you it's just uh, repetitive i tell you what uh, you know i know we've said in the past uh if they only treated crossfit like a sport people would train better Running is the same thing. If people ran and treated it like a sport, like a skill, rather than just trying to sweat and go to go to exhaustion, great point. People would run well. I'm going to extend that. You should treat all exercise that way, all of it. I don't care what you do. Right. If mm-hmm. you treat all your workouts going in, understanding that you're perfecting the skill and the technique and the movement, 
then you're going to take care of a lot of those problems you're not going to have, and you're going to get better results. You're far less likely to overwork, overtrain, overapply intensity, and hurt yourself and create bad recruitment patterns. Because how we what we say about running is the same thing I could say about people who lift weights. The thing about lifting weights is well, there's not there's nothing passive about it. It's like everything has to be intentional. Yeah, you know, and, and I know people want to sort of make that an easier process and make it more general. But you know that's what that's the kind of results you're going to get as a result, right? Like you're going to you're going to end up doing what you've already established as being the strong way to get through something. Well, I think when you when people lift weights, the reason why it happens when people work out with weights too, but the reason why it doesn't happen as much with weights as it might with running is because at least when you lift weights, there is more of an emphasis on form. When people go running, there's Slower. no emphasis on running right. as form. It's yeah. like Hey, I'm going to start running. Oh, me too. Let's go together. <laughs> and then you just run. You just go run because you think it's this natural thing that you do, but it's not because you never fucking Get run. Get up and let's, let's yeah. move. So, uh, and if you if it's super high intensity focus, like a circuit class or like some of the bad CrossFit boxes that'll just push intensity, then it's not about form either. It's all about fatigue and how many reps you can do, which encourages bad recruitment patterns. So, when you go into your workout, treat it like a skill. Your priming session is that. And by the way, a good priming session will take you. I mean, if you follow Maps Prime, you're you're priming for about 10, 15, 12 maybe, minutes, yeah. maybe 15 minutes, and then you're ready to roll, which is how long your warm-up should have taken anyway. And I promise you, you'll see better results. In fact, I've had people message me now. We've had Prime out for a while. People will send me messages and are like, you know what? I didn't change my workout at all. All I did was change my warm-up. I switched out for Prime. And I added 15 pounds to my bench press and 30 pounds to my squat. Oh, I, that's every time someone I mean, sends super me common. a question like this, I just tell them like, now it's just easier. Listen, well, there's a there's a money back guarantee on all of our programs. Get Prime, implement it in your the program. Prime bundle. Get, yeah, two yeah. weeks. Two weeks. I well, first time you don't even need two weeks. The first time you implement it and actually go through it, you should will see a difference in your workout. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Especially if you're some, the 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 older you get, so you start getting beyond 25, 30, 35, 40, The more dramatic of a difference you'll see. Oh, and yeah. and what, the reason why I can say that with confidence is I know. That over time, the older we get, the the more more common it is that you have bad patterns yeah, that you've it's created. Hardwired. Right. Yeah. And so if I give you a program or a tool that's going to help you correct that, those people will notice more of a dramatic difference. And you know what? If you were somebody that like if you came back and you said, you know, I noticed a little bit different. I'm much well, lucky you that you haven't you're not that fucked up yet. So yeah. keep doing it. Well, Don't stop doing it. Because the rest you're of still us moldable. Right. Yeah. The rest of us that implement that will notice a huge well, I'll, difference. I'll say you. this, even if you feel healthy, no problems, whatever, prime properly and you'll be able to squeeze out like one or two more reps or a little bit more weight mm. on your lifts. Or yeah. you'll just feel like you'll get under the bar Better and you'll connected. Just, and you'll just get into it. So you'll yeah. notice. That's the bottom line. You'll notice right away. Right, right. Squeeze it out. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30-day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next question is from Johnny Dumbbells. Hypothetically speaking, if being healthy meant being out of shape, would you sacrifice aesthetics for health? Oh, what a great question. Good old Johnny Dumbbells. You know what? Uh, wow. Again. What, a, what a deep question right it there. It is. You know what? I think first we should be- That's a fucking episode, We bro. should be pretty clear. <laughs> we, I think we'll do a whole episode, but let's be very clear. I don't think you should ever sacrifice your health for anything. Let's be honest. I've been around people who are very sick. Mm. I've been around people who- I've, I've known people who were shredded, looked amazing, and their health fucking turned on them. And let me tell you, uh, I don't care. How, would you want to look amazing and have horrible health? Yeah. I, how, how would anybody want that? It that doesn't would, make any sense. You wouldn't enjoy anything with no. that, whether no. it be mental or physical health. Now, the question, I know why he asked the question. He's asking the question because in fitness, we have this perception that it's one or the other. Right. That you're either you can't live in both. really healthy or you've got great aesthetics and you can't have both. And this is false. No, it couldn't be more false. This is false, and let me explain what I mean by this. If you chase aesthetics, if aesthetics is your only goal, and that's all I care about is how I look, here's, here's where that road will, 
may end up taking you. I'm glad you just said that yeah. word. It may it, end up taking that's you. That's a good. It's, I'm glad you said may because yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be. Bad. If you just focus on aesthetics, that's all you ever focus on. You you need to understand that aesthetics is subjective, and it is a moving goalpost, and you will never reach that goal. M- many times, most people will get to the point where they reach a goal, and it's the next goal. It's the next goal. Next thing you know, it's distorting their view of aesthetics. Aesthetics started out being looking fit and muscular, and now it's turning into, I need to have 19-inch arms, or I need to have a tiny waist, or I need to have these really big boobs, or this really big butt, or I need to have, you know, I need to be super shredded. And now aesthetics to you means I have to take anabolics to look aesthetic, or I need to starve myself to look aesthetic, or I need to you know, spend an hour and a half with makeup and hair and do all these different things to my body. Look, it becomes this moving goalpost. And if you only chase aesthetics, you will not get health. Hmm. That's a fact. You simply won't get health if that's all you ever focus on because eventually your health takes uh, a second. Now, that being said, I believe that you can chase aesthetics and it could lead you to health because I think that was the path that I went. I feel like I was heavily focused on aesthetics as a, and a young man who was insecure about his his body and the path of chasing aesthetics eventually led me down the path of health because you as you get better at it you start to realize that that is the answer that the answer is that the, the healthier I am, it ends up being a byproduct that I become aesthetic. Well, it's, so- it's a very easy, like, it's, it's actually quite simple. If you chase aesthetics, you, you may end up like Adam. Adam's a very self-aware, one of the most self-aware, growth-minded people I've ever met in my entire life, okay, which means he's rare. It's not very common. So you may get some health if you chase aesthetics, but most people end up with poor health. But if That's you chase bad. health, if you chase optimal health and wellness... You will get a great degree of health and wellness, and you'll get a great degree of aesthetics. Now, you may not look like a bodybuilder. You may not get so shredded because you're not going to starve yourself, but the kind of aesthetics you're going to get uh, are still excellent, and we also want to remember what aesthetics reflect. Why, is it, why, is there, why does our brain perceive aesthetics in the first place? Because, see, now that's where I wanted to go with this is that I was actually just speculating this today. I don't know what I was watching. And it, I, you know, I find it fascinating that wh- why why are we as men driven to be bigger and stronger and more aesthetically uh, like pleasing, right? And it's it's the whole idea of procreating, right? Because if you look aesthetically pleasing, then you probably look healthy and you look like you're going to have good genetics, it's a right? It's well, you you see good genes, right? You mm. see as a as a female, you are drawn to that. Because you see a healthy, strong male that you can mm-hmm. mate with that is going to give a, a healthy, strong offspring. It's a visible representation, a very simple, easy, and our bodies evolved to recognize it because it's fast. I could see you real quick. Representation of health. So if you have good skin, mm-hmm. if you have good symmetry, you move well. If you move well, if you have a decent amount of muscle, if you're not obese, but you're also not rail uh, shredded which by the way people think being super shredded is aesthetic in person it's actually not say yeah like looking at it in person versus like you know makeup and photoshop and all that is a complete different story it's not if you see someone who's fucking especially a woman especially if you see a woman who's like in the single digit body fat percentage and you see her in person most people most healthy people healthy minded people will look at that and if you ask them does she look healthy like a lot of them might be able to say Wow, she's shredded. You can see all this stuff. Does she look healthy? Does she look appealing? And most people would say no. And I'm not just talking about men. I'm talking about women would say the same thing. And the same thing for guys. Like if you're a guy and you push yourself, you push yourself to the max with muscle, with anabolic steroids and growth hormone and food and you're super huge and all these different things, most people would not consider that ideal in terms of aesthetics because like Adam's saying, aesthetics, the reason why we even identify them is it represents health, and so if you're the if you're listening right now and you're you know you 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 have the goals of just you want to look good, but you're not trying to compete or anything extreme like that, and you ha- and you're thinking I need to choose aesthetics or health, o- chasing one of them will give you both, chasing the other one will give you maybe uh, most likely just one and likely maybe neither because I'll tell you something right now I know uh, and I'm sure people listening right now know lots of people that always chase aesthetics. Chase, 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 push, push, push aesthetics. 
eventually you have neither and eventually none of us have neither none of us have aesthetics anyway you get older right you know what i'm saying like what happens at that point? well and what you start to find out and this is where i what i meant by you know i started off chasing the aesthetics and then eventually it, it turned into this health thing was i realized that the healthier i was and the more i chased health the more sustainable the aesthetics came where when i was purely focused on aesthetics anybody can starve the body and train like a fucking animal for six to eight weeks Mm -hmm. almost anybody can do that almost any which is what you see in the competitive world it's the martyr thing right almost anybody can put their put their head down say i'm not gonna eat i'm gonna fucking train and i'm gonna become aesthetic right i'm gonna look fucking shredded but nobody can maintain that for their entire life and so you end up rebounding and going back to what a normal body type looks like or potentially rebounding and looking worse but as you start to chase health and then you get yourself at the, that when you see the healthiest version of yourself and you actually objectively look at yourself, you start to realize, oh, shit, not only am I the healthiest, but this is some of the best I've ever looked in my life, too, with the least amount of work and actually learning to. And that's what it's all about is learning to listen to the body when it's when it's speaking to you. And I think. That is the problem when you become so aesthetically driven, you begin to ignore completely all the signals that your body was already trying to tell you because you're so you're so stubborn about I want to look a certain way or I want to get to this goal and this is what I see everybody doing, so this is what I'm going to do. When your body's screaming at you, no, dude, I need some rest. No, dude, feed me. No, dude, how about some meditation? No, dude, how about a night's rest? No, you know what I'm saying? It's telling you all these things and you're ignoring it and trying to push the body. And it's crazy. When you work, when you push the body like that, again, in a short term, you may be able to get to a point where you've seen the best shape of ever physically in your life, but sustaining that, not happening. Did you guys read about the girl over the weekend? I think she was in Australia, young mother of two who died um, from, they blame it on too much protein. Oh, I saw that. 25-year-old girl. So now uh, she has a, uh, a disorder, uh, urea cycle disorder, which it stops the body from being able to break down protein, so it, it leads to fatal levels of ammonia. So in this particular case, high, high, high doses of protein combined with extreme exercise can be fatal, which is her case. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because she had extreme fatigue before that. She felt terrible before that. She was getting ready for a show. What do you think she was doing that entire time? That entire time, she had extreme fatigue That entire time, getting ready for the show, she couldn't do cardio because she was too tired. She couldn't scarf down another chicken breast because her body just found it repulsive, and yet she forced it. What was she chasing? Right. She was chasing aesthetics, which forced her, which put her in a situation where she ignored all of those signals, and it led to her death. And that's an extreme case, but that's the case. I mean, I just recently heard a competitor talk about how she could barely walk three days before her competition because she was so exhausted. But man, you should have seen how shredded I was. And I got on stage and I finally won the competition that I wanted to win. And it's like, holy shit, man. Yeah. What are we doing to ourselves? All yeah. for a plastic you know, trophy. All for a fucking trophy. And, uh, and, and those of you who, who are going through this, most of you don't even compete. Like yeah. most of you aren't even trying to compete. You're just so obsessed with this aesthetic ideal that you've created in your mind or that you've allowed advertising agencies to Mm -hmm. create for you. And again, it's a moving goalpost. You will never get, I promise you, if you chase aesthetics, you'll never get to your aesthetic goal. You'll always be chasing it, always be pushing. And it's going to get more and more distorted to the point where you'll involve plastic surgery, drugs, and all kinds of extreme things. And you'll not only will you not get the aesthetics you want, but you'll definitely won't get the health. Chase optimal health and wellness and the rest will come but here's the key now here's the kicker you cannot chase health because you think you're going to get aesthetics out of it right because that's the same thing as chasing aesthetics yeah forget about it for a second forget about aesthetics for a second release it for a second listen to your body it's like giving and expecting something in return right it's not really giving when you do that it's like meditating because i'm going (laughs) to meditate so i'm going to be productive so i'm going to sit here and i meditate real hard it's the same thing I'm listen. I am 100% uh, living through this right now. I did this. I chased aesthetics for a long time. For me, it was about building muscle, and eventually, I learned I could get lean and look like I was more muscular. But I was never really lean for longer than a couple months because it was very difficult. Then my body would come out because I'd want to build muscle and whatever. Now I walk around and 
I walk around it with with more aesthetics than I ever had before. And, and the irony of it is, I don't even really care about it too much. I notice it now, and I see it, but it's not something I chase. And you can really get to that state, that point, but never trace, never trade your health for anything because nothing is worth it. I mean. Think about it this way. Would you really want to look the way you wanted to look? We totally derailed health? this question. Yeah. yeah. We totally derailed this question completely. Yeah, they're asking <laughs> if we would do that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I mean, hypothetically, fine. Let's pretend like this was the case. Let's say you had to look like you were out of shape to have great health. Or would you want to look like you were in great shape to have poor health? That's an easy choice for me. Yeah. I would to, never want poor health. Well, to, health, I mean, you have to be able to move around and like do things. So yeah. you can't like be that deconditioned. No, it, and, it I, and I think people would even expect someone like me who openly admits that I'm very aesthetically driven that I would say that and I still wouldn't. I mean, because nothing is worse than feeling like shit. You know what I'm saying? And not yeah, having that's your- That's the worst feeling. Not having your health. I mean, I could I could look amazing. And let me tell you, it's, I've had those moments of the feeling amazing because I look amazing. Yeah. But if if I got to sacrifice my health to look amazing, fuck that. Like, yeah, it's not- Yeah, it's like super sick and like, you know, immobile and like you can't do anything. Like, right. That's the worst there is. Yeah, so I- I, I always love it too. I'll work with uh, clients. Uh, I have a few online clients and I'll, this is the way I push them. And then uh, I've had a few clients. So I actually have one of them this morning. She hasn't weighed herself for months because I told her not to. She was so obsessed with it for so long. I said, look, let's just, you know, let's just go after health and wellness for now and see what happens. And I told her, I said, you know, you can go ahead and check your weight and see what happens. And she got on the scale. She lost 15 pounds of body fat. Now, this was a woman who struggled with five pounds of weight loss. Like it was a major, major struggle. And she literally lost 15 pounds on accident. Because she was chasing uh, health and wellness. So I'll end it with that. Check this out. Uh, we have 30 days of coaching. It's available for free. The place to get it, mindpumpmedia.com. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. There's a new video every single day, including the core videos that we referred to in this episode. And finally, if you want to ask us a question to answer in an episode like this one, the place to ask it on is Instagram. You can find the page at Mind Pump Media. You can find our personal pages as well. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.